valley, a long dark valley, and you need help from God right now. But you can't get help unless you ask for it. When God makes a way, He wants you to receive it. In Jesus' name. Praise God.
Yes, pray for Rita, her daughter-in-law, Jimmy Swat. Believe in God to intervene for her. The insurance has rejected the procedure that the doctor is ordering on her lungs. And God can intervene and cause this to work out where it doesn't look like it'll work out. Lay hands on sister, which is as a point of contact. Father.
Hallelujah. Did what else in prayer?
tell you, God woke me up. Well, he told me last night to get up at 4.30. Then he woke me up at 4.25 this morning to get up and pray. 4.25 on Sunday morning is not my normal time to get up. Because I'm usually tired from the whole week. And I try to rest a little bit longer if possible. But I welcome God speaking to me at any time. <coughs> For some reason, God likes the early hours of the morning. Hallelujah. He likes those times. Amen. And He likes for us to get up early times so that our mind and thoughts will not be clouded. And they'll not be distracted. Because our minds are distracted so much. Sometimes your mind's distracted when you come to church. It's why you can't worship God. I've been there. I've, been, I've sat where you sit. And I've had my mind just going down into nothing. I couldn't, I couldn't even hear what the preacher said. For all these thoughts hovering in my head. To do this, do that, do this, do that. Don't forget this, don't forget that. I know that you've got much to do. This is one of the busiest seasons. And this time of year should be the happiest time of year. But for many people, it's the most miserable time of year. Christmas. It's because we don't celebrate correctly. It's because we put carnal things ahead of godly things. People have their parties on, on Sunday instead of another day because of carnal things. Some of you get mad at me, and I know that. But people have been mad before, and they got over it, or got under it, or something. But you see, you put first who is first. Now, if you don't say amen, I may think you're guilty. <laughs> I said, you put first things first. All the family is important. But family cannot and will never save you. Amen. When you stand before God, they can't save you. Oh, but it's so-and-so's birthday or so-and-so's anniversary. What about Jesus' day? How important is Jesus to you? And I praise God for you being here because you put Jesus first today. And I praise God for you. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And you that still love the Lord, say amen. amen. You that still love me, say amen. amen. It sounded like about the same, so that's wonderful. Hallelujah. I don't, honey, you won't have to keep the car cranked for us to make a fast getaway because I still love us. And I praise God for you. In the book of Isaiah 48, 43, verses 8 and 9, I already had the outlines ready before I went to bed last night. Had the PowerPoint ready. Had the outline ready. And God let me keep the same title. And He changed every scripture in my outline. Well, I figured that He's the one that's ahead of the whole situation, the whole message. And so I better listen to Him. Because He's the one that's going to anoint and He's the one that's going to cause the power of God to move. And He'll only anoint what He tells me to do. If He don't tell me, if I go a different route from what He says, then He will not anoint that. Amen. Amen. So I'm very particular to listen to Him. And I pray I'll be able to, to preach what he's pleased with this morning. You see, he's my boss. He pays my salary. He signs my checks. He puts the money in the bank. He gives me health and strength and mentality to preach and minister. So I just guarantee you I'm going to listen to him. Because He's the one that's over everything and everyone. Amen. And I'm so glad He lets me live for Him. I'm glad He lets us pastor this great church. Thank you 
for being, and, and if you have, if I have to, I'll open both doors after I say this. Thank you for being the greatest church in all the world. Amen. Praise God. You can give the Lord a good hand. The Savior. The Savior. This is not really a Christmas message, but it's not Christmas now. Did you know it passed already? Does anybody don't know Christmas passed? Good. All right. Well, I'm glad we're all on the same page. Isaiah 43, verses 8 and 9. Bring forth the blind eyes that have eyes to see, that have eyes, and deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together. Let all the people be assembled. And who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true. I believe we're all together when we say, I want to know truth. Amen. I want to know truth. There was a time in my life in the, the, when I was 30, in my 30s, that I sought for truth. I sought for truth myself. Not the truth that was taught me, not the pr truth that was preached to me, but the truth that's in the Bible, I wanted to see is the truth in the Bible the same that was taught to me and preached to me. Yes. And I found that there was deeper meaning in the Word when I dug it out than what I heard in the pulpit or in the classroom because I got it for myself. I cried out to God and said, God, I've got to know what is truth. Am I doing the right thing? Am I in the right denomination? Do I believe right? Is what I'm believing and preaching and believing and saying is true, is it really your truth? Yes. And you better know for yourself what is truth and what is error. Yes. You see, nobody will stand before God but you. Yes, and when you stand before Him, you better know exactly that you've stood on the Word of God, truth, what the Word of God says. Yes, I've had people... And I've heard many preachers <coughs> preach and, and say different things and, and I found out that it, it wasn't according to the Bible. Yes, it's what they heard some other preacher preach. It was not truth. I'll tell you what's truth. The only truth in the world is Jesus. Yes. Amen. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Anything else is outside the truth. Amen. Except you speak what he speaks and, and coordination with what he speaks. And the next two verses, verses 10 and 12, through 12, he said, You're my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I've chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed. How many of you believe it? Say amen. 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 Neither shall there be after me. Amen. He said, I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. Yes. Beside the Lord. And this is in the Old Testament in Isaiah's writings. He's prophesying here. And he said, I have declared and have saved and I have shown when there was no strange God among you, therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Amen. It's important that we know who God is. Amen. Sometimes we can think we know, but then we question, do I really know? Our young people go to secular colleges and professors taunt them and mock them and make fun of them if they believe in God or say they're a Christian and they try their best and do everything in their power to dissuade them Amen. from being a Christian and believing God and believing His Word is true. <coughs> it's amazing how we pay big money to send children to school and, and and certain professors teach them ungodly principles. And some are not very far from here. 
Amen. But I want you to understand that the Word of God is true and Jesus is the Savior. Yeshua is His name. And Yeshua is Jesus. And Jesus is Yeshua. And He is a Savior, the only begotten Son of the Father. My Savior, it says. Now Jesus, He was born of Mary, but it was not a, an immaculate conception. You see, Mary... If God was her Savior, and He was, then she must have been a sinner. She must have been a sinner in order to be saved. Now, one scripture hints that Mary was sinless. In certain churches, they have representative of the Holy Spirit, statues, and, and Jesus. And then next is Mary, between Jesus and God the Father, and then God the Father is the highest. I want to tell you something. Mary is nowhere near between Jesus and the Father. You say, now, to some people I just blasphemed. And I made it some correspondence or email telling me that you have blasphemed my denomination. You blaspheme what I believe. Look in the book. Find what the book says. Yes. That you, no one can save but Jesus. There is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, our Lord. Yes. And you've got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You can only believe in Him. It does matter who you believe in. There are not many ways to heaven. There is one way to heaven. Some people would believe that, that we're bigots because it, we believe in just one way to heaven. <laughs> Say you're narrow-minded because you're, there, you believe in one way to heaven. I believe that there is a straight and narrow way. Amen. And only those that, that follow Jesus will make it on that straight and narrow way. Mary said in Luke 1, 46 and 47, and Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, my, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Yes. She said, Jesus was her Savior. <coughs> Jesus was her Savior. Jesus was God, 100% God, and 100% man. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me go on here. Romans 3, 23. We were all lost and in need of a Savior. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. And in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, Jesus made a way for us in Romans 5 and 8 through 10. But God committed His love, love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. Much more than being justified by His blood. We are saved from wrath through Him. He says, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Jesus saved us by His blood, by His grace, by His mercy, by His love, by His blood. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The God part of Jesus, the God part of Jesus was still God inside Jesus and you've got a fine line to understand when you read more of the scriptures Old and New Testament you find that the flesh part of Jesus which is the man part of Jesus did not sin but the flesh part of Jesus was tempted to sin yes, amen. the flesh part of it now the flesh part of it had to grow in knowledge and wisdom in God. It says in Luke 2.52, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Now, the flesh part of Jesus, He had to increase in wisdom and stature in the spirit, soul man of Jesus, 
He was complete and holy and undefiled. But the flesh part, the man part of Jesus, had to increase in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. Now this is no longer a mystery to the children of God that understand the true kenosis of Christ. Some people will debate me on that and argue and say, well, I don't believe in the kenosis. You say, well, preacher, I never heard that word. That's Greek terminology that means the self-emptying of Christ. Jesus emptied Himself of much of the power that He had with God when He was at the right hand of the Father Jesus emptied Himself of the majesty, the glory, the power, the anointing. And the way Jesus was anointed, He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. He did not use the inherent ability or the ability He had through eternity with God. He did not use that power. <coughs> if He did, He would need the Holy Ghost to come on Him in the likeness of a dove when He was baptized from a pound of baptism. But Jesus was baptized in the Holy Ghost to be our perfect example to show us that with under His power, not the God power, but the Holy Ghost power, that you could do the same things that He did. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Jesus, the of Christ, He self-emptied Himself of the powers of the Godhead. When he self-emptied himself, the kenosis of Christ. If you get time to look, look that word up, look it up. You get home, K-E-N-O-S-I-S. I don't wonder what that was. I got a wires hanging all over me. Of course, it ever shorts out, I'm going to light up. But in the kenosis of Christ, look it up, K-E-N-O-S-I-S. Greek terminology. Self-emptying. He retained his divine nature but limited himself to human standards of mankind. Human attributes and powers during the days of his flesh on this earth. Now, he is not limited to human attributes because he's at the right hand of the Father. The flesh died. He's already taken up a, a body and gone to heaven. He was resurrected out of the grave with, with his spirit, soul, and body. When he came forth out of the tomb, yes, Jesus, showing us what's going to be for us and what we've got in store for us, that God has in store for us, as Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost, he wanted us to see it was the Holy Ghost anointing and not his God powers that he had with the Father before he came to earth. Yes, amen. To teach you that you, you see, we could not do what Jesus did if it was through the powers that He had with the Father. Because we are not deity. We are not God. Let me say it two more times. We are not God. We are not God. Some people believe they are. Some people believe they're little gods. And I differ with them. Well, I'll just let them find out for themselves and they'll go and place it. They'll find out they're not little gods. But all born of the human flesh. Jesus, He emptied Himself so that He could take on flesh. Flesh is what sin in the beginning with Adam and Eve is they yielded to Satan. Satan was the ruler of this earth. God had appointed Him ruler of this earth when He cast Him out of heaven. Satan was the ruler I'm, I'm just, if you don't, well, whether you care or not, I'm, I'm going to take his coat off. I don't see too many of you wearing coats. Very few, that's all right. Isn't it wonderful to have freedom, not being under bondage, to have to do certain traditional things? Yes, amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Been set free. His power came by spirit baptism, just like your power comes by spirit baptism. And when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost of God, you have the same baptism that Jesus had when He walked this earth. Amen. Amen. That's why you need 
the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit baptism to baptize you. You need to be sanctified. You need to be saved. You need to be sanctified, which is set apart for holy service unto God. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. This Savior came to do all these things for us. Teach us how that we can walk in the Spirit and the power of Almighty God. That was wonderful. I wish you could have been with me. I wouldn't call you at 4.30 this morning to get you up. You would have been ill. Some of you have been ill as a morning if I called you. The old saying says, ill as old as he is. I don't know how ill old that he is. I really don't. Some of you may even tell me after church. But when people are waking from their sleep, they're not their normal, sweet, beautiful self. But yet, as God wanted us to have this anointing to share with you, that you would have the same anointing Jesus had when He walked this earth because we've got to do the mission that Jesus did, complete what we're supposed to do. He completed what He was supposed to do while He was on this earth. But now we're completing what He charges us to do while we're on this earth. And I want you to, I want to tell you a little secret. And I know you won't tell anybody this secret. You are to be empowered with the same power Jesus was, the power of the Holy Ghost of God, because you've got a mission to fulfill, and you can't fulfill it completely without His full anointing on you and in you and through you. I was praying. Again, I prayed this morning. I prayed this often. And I asked the Lord Jesus. And listen to all of it. Some people jump before I say my whole sentence and they don't hear the rest of it. But listen to what the whole thing is, the whole prayer. I pray, God, I don't want to live as I'm living. I'm not satisfied living as I'm living. I want you to completely annihilate all carnality, all flesh out of me and to fill every fiber of my being. Some people try to tell me it can't be done. I'm telling you, if you say that, you are so carnal, it will never happen in your life, but don't try to put it on me that I can't get as close to God as I can. Amen. Amen. People want it to get as carnal as it can, but I want to get as close to God spiritual. I want to get as close to God as I possibly can. I don't want to be any carnal any worldliness, any humanness. I want God to feel my fiber of ever being out to my fingertips, my toes, and the end of the hair of my head. I want Him to feel every nick and cranny, they say, every part of me. Because I don't want to be living myself. I want Him to live His life and take this carcass and live through me for His glory, His honor, and His praise. Amen. There's too much carnality in the pew and in the pulpits today throughout the whole world and we need to get so sold out to Jesus that we'll let Jesus take us and use us and feel us and flow through us the way He wants to do. The way He wants to live His life. The way He wants to love through you. The way He wants to help others through you. The way He wants to bless others through you. The way He wants to deliver others. The way He wants to heal others and help so many people. Amen. Right. People say no many times to what God calls them to do and ask them to do in the church because they're carnal. Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, is this still on? <laughs> is it really? I said most people won't do things. Well, well I'll pray about it. If it's a work of the Lord, you don't have to pray about it. Amen. If it's something for Him, why do you have to pray about it? He said to do it. Amen. He said, do whatsoever the hand finds to do. Amen. And do it with all your heart. Amen. Well, I'm going to pray about it. Well, we ask some people sometimes to, to pray. Well, I'm going to pray about it. Pray about praying. We're entering into fast January the 1st. 
at least 44 people are going to be fasting 21 days, one meal, every day for 21 days. Somebody multiply 44 times 21 and let me know how many that is. 44 times 21. Let me know when you got it. Because we've got to get closer to God. We've got to start out the new year seeking God. What you got? 924. 924. 924. We need 76 more meals. <coughs> Gotta come in before January the 1st. I'd, I'd love to have a thousand meals fasted. We need to fast and pray and seek God. We say we believe it. Some people can't do it because of their physical being. And I understand that. There's something wrong with you physically that would hinder you from, from fasting a meal a day. And we don't want you to if it would hurt you. But those of you that's able, I look around, I see a lot of people able. I'll go on here. <laughs> But Jesus wants us to get as close to Him as we can. Some will say, well, I want to get close to God, but you never pray in the altar. Oh, but... Come on, amen. That's right. You say, well, I want to get more of God, as much of God as I can, can have. But you've got to pray and you've got to ask Him, you've got to believe, you've got to get in His Word. And God will honor His Word. Amen. 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 Some of us, all of us, go through trials and, and difficult times. We go through depression. I go through depression sometimes. You mean you, brother, and I? Yes, I do. I'm almost human sometimes. Almost. Some of you might be humanoids, but most of us are humans. And we go through difficult times, and we go through valleys, and we go through mountaintops, and, and all in between. <coughs> And I have to pray my way through it. And seek God my way through it. You see, when you know and learn how to pray, you don't stay in the valley. You pick yourself up and you edify the Lord and bless Him and lift, lift up the name of Jesus. You glorify Him. You praise Him. You worship Him. You praise the Lord and sing praise unto Him. You say, well, I can't sing, preacher. Well, you don't have to do it around other people, but maybe you can sing in the shower or just praise the Lord the best way you can. Yeah. If you can't sing, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Matthew 4, 18, 19. Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee. <coughs> just walking by the Sea of Galilee. Saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting the net in the sea, and they were fishers. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. In the scripture, we don't hear where they repented, where they prayed, but somehow, somewhere, some way, they followed Jesus in everything they did. They left their nets. They left their nets and followed Jesus. Sometimes you got to leave everything you do. And I've got, I've got to say something here. Some people quit their jobs to follow Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, it is unscriptural. Unscriptural? What do you mean, preacher? What are you saying to me? He that provided not, I think it's about the next scripture. He that provides not for his own. No, it's not there. I'm sorry. I've got it later in my I've got it in my outline. But he that provides not for his own household has denied the faith. You see. When you really love God, some people say, Well, I'm just gonna quit work, and serve God. What what it is, so many of those preachers go so called are too lazy to work and won't support the family. And God is not pleased with it because God told us in His Word, Paul, through writing to Timothy, said, if a man not work, if, you're, if you don't provide for your own household, you're worse than an infidel and have to deny the faith. Amen. Amen. 
And I told the man to come up here, this church. Come up here for a handout. And I asked the Lord to demand the church. I'll never be back here if you did that. Preacher, I'll never listen to you again. Hear the rest of the story. Page two. I told him. I said, what kind of work do you do? He said, I'm a brick mason. I said, I'll get on the phone. And I had some contacts at that time. And I'll call somebody. You'll have a job by tomorrow. He said, oh, no, 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 I don't want to work. I don't want to do that. I'm out of the claw. I said, if you're too sorry to work, you're too sorry to get paid or get the money. He wanted me to let him preach in the pulpit. I said, oh, sir, you're not going to preach in this pulpit. And I helped him get on his way out the door. And I said, don't you ever come back to this church. Amen. Well, you're mean, preacher. I can get mean when people is too sorry to work that's able to. Amen. You better help me. I'll preach longer if you don't help me. Preach a long time if you don't help me. I'm almost here the amens coming in. I'm going to stop there. But just to let you know, Jesus went about everywhere he went, healing all manner of affliction and diseases, and he wants to work his word and will through you. There have been healings this morning. Yes. Healings this morning. We give God all the glory. Every person that's healed, every person that's helped, to God be the glory. We're not going to get on the the networks and, and say, look what this person did, look what this person did, they got healed because we're looking up to Jesus, the one that's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one that does the healing. Yeah. Yeah. He's the one that does the work. Some of you men and women may lay a hand on somebody and God heal them, but it's not you, it's God that heals them. He may use your faith, but it's God that heals them. You may use your lay on the hands, but it's God that heals them. Amen. 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 Yeah. It's God that heals them. Yeah. And God heals the people this morning. <clears throat> Praise God. Hallelujah. I saw the power of God manifested in this building. I saw a manifestation of the power of God that let me know that He was here to do business. Yes. He manifested in Himself and His power visibly to let me see and know that God was doing a work in this place. And God's wanting to do more work. Amen. Not only in this place, but outside this place, on the parking lot, on the highway. He wants to minister to people. Wants to minister to them in the, in the places where you go eat. Amen. 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 He wants to bless through you and give those people a good tip. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's a little weak. I'll take it, but it's a little weak. He wants you to bless them to let them know that the church is godly and will bless people because you're blessed and you practice what you preach and speak and testify and preach. Amen. 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 We've had waiters and waitresses tell us we hate to see churches come in here because they stiff us on the tip. That means they don't give anything. And churches of all people, and church people and Christians ought to be the best tempers in the world. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And we ought to love people and bless them and tell them about Jesus. Amen. Help me. It's going to get long. You're ready to go eat. It's going to get long. But let me tell you, I'm closing now. But Jesus is coming. Yes. Yes. Most of the church world does not believe that. Right. They just say it like it's a fantasy. And I, I pray that 100% of this church is looking for Jesus. In this generation, we're embarking on another year we're going to have a New Year's Eve service in just a few days. I'll give you a revelation about it on New Year's Eve night. Some of you still don't know. It's December the 31st. <laughs> the 
last day of the year at 8 o'clock to midnight or so. And I pray that Jesus will touch every person in this place. That God will move on all of us and draw us closer to Him. That we'll all seek the Lord with everything within us. And I want to ask you, as you're going to be going home in a little bit, or to some place to eat, can you please, please let God bless through you through some kind word or deed. Amen. Please let Jesus shine through you and smile through you. Smile at that person that's, well, grouchy and grumpy and they may be ugly. And they may look worse than you do. But smile at them. And they just might smile back. Amen. Just love them. Let the love of Jesus flow through you. And be good to people. Be kind to them. Somebody breaks in front of you, just say, God bless you. Happy New Year. <coughs> and let them get a hand. And don't make a big thing out of it. Somebody cuts you off in, in traffic. I've had all, several, close to several wrecks during the season. People pull across the road in front of you. I guess they're just so busy with the season that they didn't know what they were doing. Now, I believe they didn't know what they were doing because they drove like it. And they wouldn't ordinarily do that to hurt you or hurt yourself. And they need prayer. And I prayed for them. I said, God, please touch them. They're lost, stable. And Jesus will use you. Let's all stand again. Is there one person here that's not saved who wants to be? Is there one person? I'm going to just wait just a few moments. Is there one person that's not saved who wants to be? Uh, most everybody that had needs came and were prayed for earlier. And I want to pray a special prayer for you as you leave. That you please be cautious. That you please drive watching the other fellow. That wherever you go, watch out for people. Some of them are not responsible for what they do because they're just in a frenzy. Some people are disappointed. Some people are hurting. And you thank the Lord that you're not. You can encourage some people. There's some clerks and stores that are hurting that need to be encouraged. And you're to be a minister unto them to bless them. You're to be a shining light of Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, I pray for this great, vast congregation of people. Flow through them as they go to their separate ways. God, anoint with the Holy Ghost and fire and breathe on them and bless them. Help them, dear Father, to, to know and to see that you will bless through them. Oh, God, touch them and use them. Bless. Help them, oh, God, to be touched of you. Cause your spirit to bless through them and touch through them. Help them to win souls to you. Lord, that person that's so discouraged, they may be about to go over the edge and commit suicide or do something tragic. Please speak to these precious children of God that they can speak a word that would help that person and deter them from doing something wrong and bad and eternal. And I praise you for using these great people and loving through them. Keep us. Bring us back to your house tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.